Hi guys. In this episode, we'll be talking about the Alpine Stars Tech 1K Start V2 Car Boots. That's a mouthful. Now I've had these boots around for a while waiting to be reviewed. I've been using the same Spark OK Run boots for a long while, despite doing a roundup to see if there was anything better out there. These boots just missed the delivery deadline for that group review, but could they be the shoes I've always dreamed of wearing in my sim rig? Let's find out. The boots I have here today are a fairly simple colour scheme. It's understated and I quite like that. The sole is a good thickness, perhaps a little more heel than I'm used to with the K runs, but this isn't necessarily a bad thing. And the important toe box is thin, which should translate to good feel on the pedals. The upper looks solid, if not as breathable as some of the other footwear I've tried to date, but generally it's pretty decent. Now, talking about color options, there are a good number of colors available for these Alpine style boots. Some are understated and others big and bold. You should be able to find something that suits your style. However, the actual colors used in the range I found slightly odd, but that might be because I love green and I didn't manage to find any that were green. Trying the boots on, they feel well padded around the ankle with perhaps a little more room in the toe section for those of us with wider feet. The wide padded opening does make them easy to fit and comfortable to wear even before they are properly broken in. When bending your toes, the stiff upper has a tendency to pinch your toes, though this is more with extreme bends and most people don't walk or drive that way, so it shouldn't be a big deal, but it's still worth noting. Despite having some room within the shoe, I can't feel any movement from side to side. I'd advise trying on a pair before you commit to a purchase as it feels like those who are on the smaller side of their shoe size may end up having too much room. I've laced these up, ignoring the top lay size. If you need a tighter fit on your shoe, I'd advise using these. I found lacing them up this way did offer a tighter experience, but at the expense of comfort. And as the inner lining helps to stop your feet from moving around too much, I personally opt for the extra comfort. Heading into a race, the boots hold up pretty well. I can feel pretty much what I can with the Sparco boots. The sole is a tad thicker, and I thought that would be noticeable, but actually the thickness of the heel was more apparent than the toe area. This isn't a huge deal, but just different from what I'm used to, and you may find it more comfortable with the extra heel lift, or you might not. I didn't find the lack of breathability to be a huge problem in short format races, and in long races they were no worse than other boots I've been wearing. That extra space I'd felt in the boots prior to racing, I didn't notice it at all in racing, which is fantastic. My only niggle is how the boots are laced up. With the Sparco boots, they have a slight different lacing arrangement near the top, the boot aiding comfort. The Alpine Stars just have the same ring arrangement all the way to the top. I found using the top lace eyes caused me some discomfort, so opted to stop using them, and that made the boots a little bit more comfortable. Pricing for these boots is varied, and I found them for as little as £60 and as much as 100 That's quite a swing. If you can find them for a bargain, then they're probably worth thinking about. However, considering the K-Pole is a better boot, I'd still opt for that anyway, especially as there is so little difference in price. At the upper end though, they're not easy to recommend at all. It's a shame that I didn't manage to get these boots into the roundup as they were pretty good. They aren't going to upset the top two, Definitely the Sparco K-Pole and the K-Run have an edge, but they do fit in closely behind. If I lace them up for my own comfort and consideration, I never had to think about with the Sparco, then they really are quite comfortable, albeit a little sloppy when walking around. Sizing wise, they come up a bit larger than most of the other brands I've tried. That isn't necessarily a bad thing, 
but it might make you consider getting a half size down or at the very least trying the fit before committing to the purchase. I was initially worried by the lack of padding around the ankle and this might affect some people but I didn't notice it once I was racing. Like I previously said, it does make them a little bit bigger on the entrance though and that will either be fine or annoy you immensely. These boots certainly look less breathable than others I've tried, but I didn't notice a huge difference. Perhaps in the height of summer, it'd be a bit more noticeable, but so far so good. The cupboard incidentally during testing was in the mid 20s centigrade or late 70s if you prefer Fahrenheit. After about three hours, they get a little toasty, but then I'm known to run a little hot anyway. So these boots aren't perfect, but they are pretty decent. Personally, I would still go for the K-Pole any day of the week. Now, if you've enjoyed this review, don't forget to give me the thumbs up. That'll let me know that you like this content and I should produce some more. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because then you see more of my stuff. Yay! And it also helps me to know that you like what I'm doing. Not to mention, it helps the powers that be at YouTube to start serving my content more to other people like you. So that's it for me here in this episode. Until next time, guys. Bye-bye for now.